It is the end of the night. It's the end of the weekend. Every game has been watched. Power rankings have been organized. I'm filming this prior to Monday morning where I will be on ELF Live. So you'll be watching this on Monday. I'm watching this after watching the games on Sunday. Tune in for ELF Live. I'll be with Alfieri. We'll be breaking down a lot of the week. So I'll be sharing some of the insight on here. I'll be leaving some of the insight for that part. So keep your eyes on both of them. Tune in for both of them. As per usual, Monday we do power rankings. Tuesday we'll do the how-tos and break down the schedule and see what's up for us in week 11. But week 10 was good. A very good week. A lot of blowouts, but some good movement, some good storylines, a lot going on. So let's actually just break into it. So we're just going to start number 17. I think it's kind of obvious. Barcelona Dragons, they moved down one. A, a big loss against the Surge. Backups were in pretty early. The final score was 71-7. Uh, they, they, they got pile drives. Like <laughs> it was, they scored, but they were bad. They're down. They scored seven points. Scored back through five interceptions. Uh, Riley, you know, didn't play out of his mind. He went six for six, uh, six nine for sixteen for 101 yards. Two, one, two touchdowns, one pick. Henry came in as well. Running game was fine. Like they just, they just kind of took their foot off the gas. They didn't really need to do. Uh, too much with this one of course multiple interceptions and i'll talk more about this one on elf live it was just a dominant one i mean the second quarter alone 27 points third quarter 34 points like wasn't particularly very close and dragons just you know they crumbled they they're without most of a team so they're that space and there's number 16 though prague lions now again they got beaten really badly, 62-23, but they put up 23 points on the Vienna Vikings. And at one point, they were winning the fucking game. They were very close in the first quarter at the end. And then they kind of all fall apart, and they just let Ben Holmes tear them to pieces. But they got that first pick. And that pick was very good. <laughs> yeah, That pick, they nearly took back to the house, too. Perkins actually looked all right. Offensive line issues, it kind of got in the way. But Zuleko got a good amount of yardage. He got two touchdowns as well. Mel Zero didn't really get much cooking. They couldn't get too much actually being made on the short completions. But that interception by Borkovic shows that they can do it. <laughs> and they do still have a very good defense. But offensive line issues and poor offense leads to a tired defense. And they just kind of got ran through. And probably another game I'll talk a little bit more insight into. And I've rewatched it for ELF Live. But number 15, uh, Milan. A again, very similar situation. They got beaten really badly. They don't move at all. 69, nice. 230. New quarterback, Salem. Started all right. Like, at one point, he had three touchdowns, one interception, which is it was pretty fucking good. And then it all kind of fell apart. They got two picks on Chad Jeffries, both of which were very good. Chad was very much trying to force the ball into spaces at the end of the half, and it just wasn't working. Those Both of those picks were very impressive. But then he also got six touchdowns, and then his backup got another touchdown as well. I thought they showed some flashes. Salem's run game was very evident. We saw that with Legano that he has, does have legs, but he takes a lot of contact, and it was the same thing in this game. Getting drilled. Like, he's trying to run out. He escapes the pocket, and he gets fucking hit big. Tommy will have a few touches, so he's getting back into it. But Malik Stanley, if you listened to my fancy advice, I told you to go after Malik Stanley. He got 136 yards and four touchdowns. Was unguardable in this game. Just everywhere. And when you have a receiver that good, he's a quarterback's fucking best friend. And it, it was it showed a lot. I, I wasn't entirely convinced with Munich in this one, but Milano, more than Munich, were better than I thought they would be considering the change of offensive identity of the quarterback. And he is very different. And he's not like unbelievably different to Brogan Hurst, but he is different. Had a bit of a comeback. Of course, they were down 27 7. And at one point, they were down 21 0. That's when I checked in. I was like, oh, fucking hell. Checked back, and it was like 35 21. They were doing pretty good. They just let it step in the, in the fourth quarter and in the third quarter, especially the fourth. Like towards the half, they did get those big time interceptions, which showed some momentum, but they just couldn't withhold that. It's kind of just a, a a burst of play and then they slowed right down at number 14 the enthroners i picked them to win against the washa pandas we'll talk about that more on the lf live 62 to 12 brutal brutal mangle played fine like he he didn't do great 
like yardage wise 184 on on 30 attempts one touchdown but they just got torn up on the defense so again the running game wasn't really there but they just got tore up on the defensive side by a the run game which we knew was going to happen we knew that pandas were going to come in with a very strong run game they got david they got uh Jedidi, who are two very good running backs in their own right we knew that that was going to be a thing but what we didn't expect is also the passing to kind of be given problems now if you look at norwood you see 77 yards and three touchdowns so you're like ah okay but the screens were working he played high school quarterback before he went to ucla as a receiver he was a high school quarterback so a little bit of that in this game short screens short passes some of the field did pretty well you know cole when he's healthy is a very good receiver but the enthroners just they lacked kind of everything they really couldn't stop those short screens at all the lack of athleticism on the outsides really shone through you know it can't all just be rodeon like the, the hungarian talent on the db core it just isn't enough it just isn't enough and when you've got americans a d-line and then they get these i think i think the panthers played this very well so got the americans in the middle of the field on a d-line for the enthroners Panthers get the ball out immediately into their American skill position to have a lot more speed and athletic ability than the DBs of the Enthroners, and they just shredded them. And that was a massive part of it. I think we'll see more teams implement that. I mean, it's not like the Enthroners like a title contender or anything, but I think we'll see more teams utilize that lack of athleticism in some of the positions on the outsides of the Enthroners defense. At 13, we have the Helvetic Mercenaries. Now, they're 1 in 8. They're not a good team, but if you watch the Raiders game, and you'll see the score was 42 to 28, and you think, well, they scored 28 points, that's pretty good, but they did concede 42. Now, they got that pick six on Nkosi, a great play by Fogg, awesome play, just jumped the route, also it was a very, very bad pass by Nkosi, and we'll get into that in a minute. But Robinson looked awesome, that off-platform throw by Clayton was amazing, he got Spiller involved in set. it was all, it was interesting, it was all Robinson in the first half, all Spiller in the second. Only Ward got one catch, but everything else went to, to Robinson and Spiller. Robinson got two touchdowns in the day. Their defense kind of let them down, especially in that last drive. Like the last two drives, and Cozy tore them apart. And it seems to be quite a regular thing with the Raiders that they do that on those last drives. But Clayton, I thought, looked good. He had that early interception, which just a bit too high as he's adjusting to the league. And then since that first drive he looked pretty good so i i thought he did i thought he did well they finally had a running back over 50 yards holy shit they had a first running back to score a touchdown helvetic mercenaries ever in week 10 first running back aiken and afb have rushing touchdowns that's it <laughs> now and cody has one so congratulations to them they finally did it uh, i'm glad they did it robinson's back and he's outstanding and he was so good in this game man and they were down 35 to 28 I'm pretty sure at half like it was so close it was really close and he just ended up uh or is it the end of the third or, or whatever however it was but it was very close Raiders pulled away in the fourth which was a shame uh the offensive line of the mercenaries I want to talk about too very much improved it was very clear with Dion coming in from uh from the Sea Devils with Elvis Nunez coming in as well so much improved it's not perfect like Clinton was still getting hit a little bit and his accuracy wasn't fantastic and some of that was due to him some of that was due to the offensive line he got sacked a couple times but it was a much improved offensive line performance and that's something I'm going to talk, going to talk about a lot in the left live it was it was good to see and number 12 we have Hamburg now Hamburg was so close to getting a win they were so close and again you'll look at the score you'll see 40 for the Galaxy 23 for the Sea Devils but it's not entirely reflective it was 26-23 in the fourth quarter. What's this game like a couple hours ago? <laughs> On the live show, which I was streaming for about seven hours. So my mind's gone a little bit crazy. But the Sea Devils, Fulford is so hit and miss. He really fucked the end of that game. They were down 10 points. I get it. It was unrealistic. But then he throws that immediate pick six. And then the game's done. And then they get a garbage time drive and he throws another pick, pick that was this close to being a pick six. Twice. Now, this is not good enough, to be honest with you. The runs high in Canedo, I need to see him more consistently. Now, he'll get a big 60-yard run on one carry and then the other 14 carries he won't do very much with. We saw that again today. 
Pascali, you're getting on an E, you cut offensive line to get in a running back, and you give the running back five carries. Confusing. Very, very confusing. Uh, receiving Neil did really well. I think that Justice got into some good positions and opened up some good holes. Defensively, they kind of they kind of struggled. They didn't get much pressure, I don't think, on a quarterback very much. Uh, Fordford, when he was getting pressured, was throwing off his back foot like a motherfucker. <laughs> and a lot of them were staying out of the back of the end zone. So that was an issue for them. Uh, kind of throughout the game, to be honest, like constantly. And they, they, they had bad play calling. Like throughout the whole play. Like the whole game, pretty much, had some bad play calling. And it's just, and I'm not a coordinator. But I think that I would have maybe called some things differently on certain situations or certain downs. And number, but I don't want to go on that too hard. Number 11, Voshav. Now, they don't move. Which, some people I think would disagree with them not moving. But they did beat on the Enthroners. And they did make it look fucking easy. Really easy. I think some of that goes head defense. AJ was AJ again. He got that amazing, like, fucking ripped the ball out of that fumble. He looked great. As per... I think Norwood did a really good job in managing it and with those screens, like I said, the exposed of athleticism. But I beg Matt Cole can stay healthy. Like, when Matt Cole, they, we got flashes of it. Four catches, 95 yards, and two touchdowns. We got flashes of it with how fast he looked with the ball in his hands. But it's just so fucking inconsistent. He's been on IR twice this year already. Twice. And Zozo couldn't get started as much. He didn't have as crazy amount of yards. Adams finally got a lot more touches in the backfield like we expected them to. And he looked great. He, he really did. Obviously, they weren't going to give him the ball as much as a receiver in this game. And they utilized him as a running back, which I think was a good idea. They made it look easy. They really did. They really did. They got over 200 yards rushing, which we thought they would. They were great in the red zone, 7 out of 8 trips. They got the fumble. They didn't cause many turnovers, as the school might suggest. But they did look great. They really did. And they blew the fucking roof off of me. Alex's prediction. They blew the roof of uh, now Alfieri's prediction. We all thought the Endroners coming in with this momentum. And Voshav really silenced it. Which I think is good for them. I think they really did need that. The offensive line looked improved as well. They just looked a lot better. Like, this is kind of what we thought we'd see with a heavy run. But the play calling still was, was good. It, it, it really did utilize that speed of us, as I've said. But where the fuck has this been for the last <laughs> few weeks? I guess me and that, that, the Enthroni scored 62, and and previous to that it was like it took ages for them to score. But weird game. They don't move, but who does move two places is Frankfurt, and I think that'll confuse some people. Now, did they get generous with the score? Absolutely. I think McKay had a good game against stats. Don't tell the whole story. He went 17 for 32 for 242, 244, one touchdown, one interception. He also got a touchdown on the ground and 100 yards. And that's a big thing because a lot of those rushes, especially that one to get him into the red zone on that 26-23 score on fourth down was incredibly impressive. He looked great. A lot of cr like clutch plays. It was good, tack like bad tackling on, on the uh, defensive part. But he looked really good. He looked really, really good. And... The defense really came through with that with that massive, massive two <laughs> interceptions. They had that fumble on the goal line that was kind of luckily brought back for the false start. They got kind of lucky with that, I'm not going to lie. But Sandro looked good. He got 23 carries for 108 yards and a touchdown. Looked confident, looked healthy, took the holes. It was averaging, it was hitting, hitting gaps like we expected him to. He got another touchdown. Uh, Kevin Kaya, also some really clutch plays. A couple of drops, but looked really good. Strama with a uh, clutch touchdown tipped from Castle. I think it was Castle. It was Ke Castle or Kaya. Tips it at the right at the end. And he catches it. It was a great play. Really, really fun play. But Castle, again, was awesome. That last bomb where he got a little bit too close to the goal line. I think he probably should have slid. Just to take a little bit more time with the clock. But, you know, he looked good as well. Uh, 153 yards for him on the day. And they just... They, they iced the game. I've got it written down. Castle, long catch, ice the game. Pick six, ice, ice the game. And then again, lol. <laughs> like they just kept doing it and they kept making those big plays at the end. I think that's what ultimately won in the game and has them above Voshlav. Because they beat up on a better team and they made those clutch defensive plays that we've seen a little bit of. They, they have had a good defense for a while. 
just not an elite one. And our offense was, was giving up a lot of opportunities. But this time, they took the opportunities. They ran a lot better in the red zone, which I'm so fucking happy they started doing. Because, oh my god, they weren't running in the red zone for weeks. <laughs> and they finally did it. Me and someone in the galaxy talked about it. We were both a little bit confused of why that wasn't happening. But, yeah, I'm super happy they did it. And they come away with a really good win. And number nine, I have Cologne. Now, Cologne are going to fall. Uh, uh, not yet. But they're going to fall in the next few weeks because they lost 37-0 to Madrid and never looked competitive. Weed had a bad game. Like, Weed had a really, really bad game. Like, he was really forcing the ball into places that just wasn't any space. He did that four times, got four picks. He played really badly. If they if they had Gerald Allman, I don't think the result changes. They might get one touchdown. I think Cast Hill played well. But... The running game just wasn't there, and to be honest, it's because of the the, the front of the uh, the Madrid Bravos team that it just didn't happen. So many flags, so many flags in this game, and it was just undisciplined, really, really undisciplined. And on both sides, it, absolutely on both sides, but it stuck out a lot more. Like it was eight penalties each. It stuck out a lot more on Cologne when they're getting their ass beat, and they're still getting penalties. <laughs> Really bad look for them. They they just they just didn't look good. Like like I said, forcing the ball. The run wasn't there. The run is their identity. And they couldn't do it. So they got forced to pass. I think Madrid did a really good job in forcing them to pass. And they just couldn't find anyone except for Carlos Hill. But those four picks were brutal. Especially when they started getting into the red zone and through interceptions. That was really tough. They did that a couple times. Or maybe just outside the red zone and not one at the end. But we just got jumped. It was, a, it was a it was a really really bad day for for them and they're gonna fall without Jared Jammers out for I believe the rest of the year now that they probably aren't gonna make playoffs. And Madrid got an important win and they're back on track I think so not great. But moving in to the top eight, Berlin Thunder. Berlin didn't play. They haven't moved. I think that's reasonable. Munich are at number seven. They did score 69 points, nice, on on Milan, but they also conceded 30, and that's a problem. <laughs> we talked about how good Stanley was, and he really was just ripping him a new one. Like, I mean, four touchdowns is good, however you cut it. He was outstanding, open everywhere. He's so big and physical. There isn't really a corner you can put on him. <laughs> There's going to be able to stop him. The rush defense was a little bit more disappointing than I thought it would be. They've got... A phenomenal defensive line. They've got Evans Yoruba. They've got uh, Lou. They've got uh, Venevola. They've got an amazing defensive front. They allowed Jock to get 89. They allowed Salem to get 70. And they weren't quick enough to Salem as I, I expected them to be. I expected them to shut him the fuck down. <laughs> and they did at the end. They really did at the end. It's like three picks in a row. Uh, Nid Sander got one. Uh... Right at the quant- towards the end, uh, and Kembe got a one at right at the garbage time. He got two picks in a day ultimately, and that was a good signing that we talked about on um, on show. And Evans got uh, one too. They did get a couple sacks, like Zagabre got a sack and, and Levin got half a sack, but 30 points against one of the worst offenses in the league. I think this will give them a bit of a reality check. The offense was good, like I've said the last couple of weeks. The defense has always been good, the offense is catching up day by day. This one, it looked like the offense was outperforming the defense for the first time we've seen this season. They're going to need to step up. They've got an easy schedule. They're going to need to step up when they play the Raiders. Speaking of which, the Raiders. <laughs> They're at number six. Both of these teams are, are neck and neck, and you could put them either way, I don't mind. But the reason why I've got it is because the Helvetic team are 1-7, and seven, and the Raiders were close to losing this game. However, and Cozy Perry is just... And they did it. They also did it again. They played up and down to their opponents. They played down because they started really poorly. Well, they were 21 7 up, but they started fucking it. <laughs> and at the end, they performed really, really well. And Cozy with just a, a game of night and day throws a pick six in a throw that he should never even be attempting because it just wasn't open. It never was. And then that last drive where he's just dicing them up, running, getting that round the corner for that touchdown was just incredible. Like, 
it's just night and day and it's the same place <laughs> same different like game the raiders outside run worked really really well i thought and sweeting was exactly what i thought it would be they use sweeting a lot as a receiver as a, as a run threat you got seven catches for 98 yards and a touchdown but he also got five carries for uh, 32 yards. He got really close to scoring a rushing touchdown as well, literal inches. Perry got two rushing touchdowns himself just by getting over the line. Bonatti got another touchdown to add to his collection. So four rushing touchdowns in a day for the team is kind of what we have expected from the Raiders. And it continued in this one. Going forward, can't really be allowing <laughs> two receivers to go over 100 yards. More of a DB thing. Garrick is a big DB, but he isn't very fast. And that has been something that teams have picked on. But I thought that fucking play on Spiller. Right at the end. Game clinching drive. They're moving the ball. And then they force that fumble. And uh, Lieber gets the recovery and runs it downfield. And the game was basically over from there. Great, great play. Taylor... Had a tough game against uh, Robinson, I thought. Uh, he, had his, he had his wins, but he had, I think, more losses than wins overall. And Sieber with that recovery, I think, completely iced the game. That was fantastic play by them defensively. I wanted to talk about it in Mercenaries, but I thought I'd talk about it in the Raiders instead. Outstanding defensive play. One of the best of the week. One of the best of the week. Probably the best of the week due to the, the circumstances. And they really shut it out in the fourth. Didn't allow any points. That f like fourth quarter drive, and then right at the end of the timeouts, and they just ran the ball well. And Cozy made a really good play with his legs on fourth down to keep them in the lead. And I thought they played well. I was impressed. Not so impressed with all of it, but the last two, like the last half, I was impressed with. At number five, Madrid, and I mentioned the flags. Like, it was also in Madrid. I know it's a rivalry game, and they're in the same conference, but it just looks a little bit. You know, I mean, it leaves a sour taste in the mouth. I thought Duncan played fine. He played all right. Got three touchdowns overall, but I don't think he really blew the world on fire. He did He did pretty good. Obi, fine. Molina actually took the most of the carries. He got 15 carries. I think Obi got kind of knocked about a little bit. Sinedo was the leading receiver. We didn't see much of Patterson in this game. We saw a little bit of Madden Siestro, but only got 10 yards in a day. But didn't. Add, I feel like we got a little bit more of him. Spread the ball out a little bit more, which isn't a bad thing. But it was the interceptions that really won him the game. Vera, I don't know why people continue to underestimate Vera. He's one of the best ball hawks we've seen in the league, like, ever. Like, he's one of the leading interceptions, like, ever. Galena played well at safety as well. Like, he was a player I criticized in the offseason for not being a very good coverage guy. And he's made leaps and bounds in that area, honestly. He really has. They just looked really fucking kind of easy. Like, <laughs> When this run defense was so good as well, like that deserves to be accredited too. Kicker went five for five as well, so he didn't have any issues with that. It just never really struggled, and I don't really have a very detailed analysis with this one because it was kind of a boring game. Like it was close for a bit, Madrid pulled away, and then with the flags, it just kind of left a massive taste in your mouth. It was just like, nah. at number four, Paris Musketeers, they got. They're shit rocks. <laughs> so for lack of a better word, they got absolutely fucked up by the Ryan Fire. Spoiler alert. 38-6. And the 38-6, the, the 6 is generous, let's be honest. And the reason why is Jadrian was on fire. We'll talk about him and the Ryan Fire in a minute. But Edwards started off the game not well. That interception on the first drive. Edwards' clutch ability has been something we've called into question on this channel, on other people's channels as well. Especially with the last game against Ryan, right at the depth for his inception. This start of the game, instant momentum turn, and they never really looked competitive from there. The main thing, run game was not working again. It's been a few times that the run game really hasn't come up, and this was a massive one. And the interior line for Ryan, I know it's amazing, but really not a good, not a really, really, really bad actually. Under 100 yards rushing, they got 79 yards, and I know. Also, so did Ryan, but they just had a lot more. They did a lot more with a lot less, like, and it was very clear. Receiver-wise, a couple drops. Mahonwu only one catch. We were all really excited to see him back in the game. Didn't really get much. Didn't really get much targets. The pressure, the offensive line didn't hold up great. He, Edwards was thrown off his back for a lot. It was kind of more of a reminiscent of last year's offensive line, which isn't very good. 
They could not deal with McKnight. And they could not deal with Harden. And the reason why is because of some of the injuries. We're talking about it, and we'll talk about how Ryan executed that phenomenally. And I want to talk more about them in, in that. But the run game has been so poor. And honestly, it's just a, it's a very different team than what we've seen all year. Like they weren't hitting these intermediate short routes as well. Trying to force the ball along a little bit. Receivers just weren't getting open. I guess it's Ryan, so it's kind of tough. But we saw them look really good for so long. And they had a hiccup against Ryan. Well, I would believe it was so close though. Ryan made the adjustments. Paris did not. And Paris got fucked up. <laughs> Again, for lack of a better word. And I've written down about the scuffles at the end. Like, I said the same thing about Cologne. I called them out. I called out Madrid. Same thing with Paris. And kind of the same thing with Ryan. But Paris seemed to be more the ones starting it, from my point of view. You can't really be talking shit when you're getting, like, beaten up that bad. <laughs> they only made it into the red zone twice. Had eight penalties on them. Which ain't good. They had a lost fumble, again, which I've talked about before with them as they do fumble the ball, especially with their receivers of fumble the ball. I think it was Austin Mitchell again. I can't confirm, but another receiver fumbled the ball after the catch, which we've seen a couple of times with uh, with Paris. And it was stuff like that. It was a missed field goal at the end of the half that they were already down 21-0, but a field goal would have helped gain a little bit of momentum because they threw the pick, and hypothetically, if they didn't throw the pick, they might have scored a touchdown, right? They missed a field goal, and then they get the ball at half. They could have been right in this game if they actually kept pressing, but they didn't. Ryan took over, and eventually Ryan even had their backups in towards the end of the game. So the Musketeers, a 4 2 disappointing game, and hopefully they'll get back to like the team we kind of know and love them to be. At number three, Vienna Vikings. Stay exactly where they are. Beat the shit out of the Lions, but only really for two quarters like <laughs> Ben Holmes continues to need to throw a pick before he turns on that's not good I know he threw seven touchdowns I'm very aware of that I know that's what the comments are going to be about Ben VP that didn't look like an MVP to me you can throw a pick to get started it's happened in a couple weeks they need to throw a pick to get started have with Rosh have Against these big teams, against Ryan, against Surge in the playoffs, who cannot throw a pick before you mentally chick in. Because it's just going to end badly. And again, this is not a good DB core <laughs> for uh, for Prague. It's not a good defense. They get knackered. I mean, they're going to, right? It makes sense. O offensive line held up really well again. The running game, you know, Pajerinen is he's so good. He got nine carries, got 121 yards and a touchdown. No, Toro was great again. Reese Horn was great again. Schultz has had a big impact this year still. Sudi even got a touchdown as a defensive player. Beer Obama, less than we've seen. I was kind of thought we might get a little bit step up, but not as much action. I'm hoping they're nursing him and just kind of thinking it was it was Brog, so you don't need to blame as much. I'm hoping that's the case. I hope he hasn't got any more injuries. The young defenders, though, of Vienna, they're stepping up again. Talitza is very likely the defensive rookie of the year. No, Swanko did really well. Uh, Lalo continues to impress me. Like, he might be the player that's, like, most improved. Lalo is in a very strong contention for that. And they are 10-0. But we're still disappointed. They were losing to Prague in the first quarter. They did have to get themselves out of a hole, and they eventually did. But they needed to throw the pick before they get started. And for some reason, I can't get past that. It really does rub me the wrong way. And it's not Ben Holmes's fault. Well, it is Ben Holmes' fault. It's not a personal thing. <laughs> I just really think that's going to come full circle at some point in the postseason. And number two, I don't think it's much of a surprise. Still got Surge coming in number two. And I don't usually reward people for beating up on bad teams. But, you know, you force five interceptions. The defense is just so dominant. You, again, didn't really have to play your best players and your best players didn't play great you know right didn't play amazingly the run game was was there but that was kind of what led them to it. i mean they're averaging like 10 yards to fucking carry but it was just it was a very easy win I, I don't think anyone's really surprised by it to be honest and they again it's another game where they can keep fit keep healthy show the defense is elite and move move on like 
it really is just that simple. I'll break that one down maybe a little bit more near left live, but it was a fucking easy win, right? It wasn't much, really much to talk about. Well, it was talk about though. It's number one, right? Fine. Mug Knight had a fucking awesome game. Amazing game. He had 183 yards and a touchdown, but it was just the way that he was doing it. It was so dominant. He caught everything. He got open every time. He had rack yardage. He got spec catch. He was amazing. So good. One of the best receiver performances uh, potentially in, the, in this season. I know it will go under the radar because his, his stats are good, but they're not like they're not like Stanley's. But McKnight is absolutely in a in a realm of uh, getting the the player of the week. Like he was phenomenal. Harlan again, five catches, seventy five yards or seventy four yards, two touchdowns. You look at it, and go, that's a good game. But he was fucking amazing, <laughs> and it was very evident that Ryan were targeting certain receive uh, certain DBs. Twenty two, they were targeting twenty two. They were targeting a few of them. They had to move around the DB core. Paris did didn't help. Because Harlan is just bigger, faster, stronger than everyone they're putting on, especially 22. He was getting burned in the first quarter. He got two touchdowns real early. And then McKnight is just so fast, they couldn't fucking get near him. He just couldn't. Like, that was one of the best one-two punches of the season. And a man throwing a ball, Jadrian Clark, on fucking fire. So good. Like, this was MVPJ, and people were being... Saying all year about, oh, he's not looking as good as he did last year. Like, he is good this year. But this is the game where we saw him flash back to last season. 22 for 28, 287 yards, four touchdowns. Just diced them up. Showing his arm talent more than he was showing his short and intermediate. It wasn't a ton of short and intermediate passing concepts. But those deep balls are just gorgeous. A few of them he missed. Like, he didn't throw deep perfectly. Like, he had that one to McKnight was just a little bit, maybe a half, a few inches um, too long. And it fell out of his hands, but holy shit, Jadrian was on fire, like, he looked so good, but flawless, impeccable, he was great, he looked great, defensively, absolutely ragdolled him, absolutely ragdolled him, Don, Don Cora has had a very similar season to last season's Alessandro Fernandez, where he started slowly, it seems to be the way the fire do it, they start slowly, and then they just snap, <laughs> halfway through the year, Alessandro did exactly the same thing last season. We had no stacks and then just got like five. Don Cole's done exactly the same thing. And he got a good penetration. The whole defense just played well. They got a lot of hurries and pressure on Edwards. Seibel with that amazing interception. The first drive, like full stretch, just a great catch. Like, so good. They just, they just locked him the fuck up. They really did. They really did. Tony Anderson was great again. As he is one of the best European defensive backs in the league. Like, they just look so good. And that's going to do us. This has been a long one. All right, I've been talking for about half an hour, so I'll keep it brief. 17, Dragons. Got beaten up still, just in rebuild mode. 16, Prague. Showed flashes. Were leading at one point. Just ultimately let it slip away, and they couldn't get it done. Milan. Put up good points with a new quarterback, but gave up. Six nine points, nice, which is not a very good number for a defense to give up, and ultimately, at the end of the game, really slipped away from them with those late interceptions. The Hervoir expected a lot more against Voshtav. They just got beaten up from start to finish, really. Helvetic, a really good performance, nearly beat a contending team, and they could have if it wasn't for fumbles and, and fourth quarter defense not really stepping up a level. Hamburg, Another close game, another loss. Fulford, two late interceptions really sealed their fate. Voslav played great. Norwood did what he needed to do. Running game carried. They looked good. They looked improved. Frankfurt, big win. Defense clutched up at the end to really shut out the game. They iced it. Stanley was great. I think uh, I think McKay did really well as well. And also so did Sandro. Cologne. Got beaten up really, really badly, but against top contender and without running backs, you could argue Frankfurt a little bit, maybe. Berlin didn't play. Munich, big win. Defense, mm, offense stepped up. League standing, got four touchdowns. He's so back. Raiders, similar situation, honestly. It really nearly fucked it. <laughs> and Cozy looked really clutched down the straight. And they ended up with a win. Madrid, 
easy, comfortable win, kind of boring. Didn't really get too much out of it, but they, they did what they needed to do. Paris kind of, I think the light shone too bright. They didn't look very good. Offensively and defensively, they just got uh, they just got outplayed. Vienna, a lot of points on a bad team, but at one point they were losing to that bad team, so it's kind of hard to judge them off of it. But they came through, I just need to see them do it against better opposition, which we're not going to see into the playoffs. Still got Surge, big win. Massive win, but against a really, really dead team. Ryan Fire, a dominant win, great game plan. Against one of the better teams in the league, in the division, they mopped the fucking floor with a rival that gave them a lot of problems in the first game. So, amazing adjustments, probably the best adjustments we've ever seen. <laughs> Honestly, it might be. And they come out with a really, really strong victory. So that is going to do us here. And this one's a late night one. My voice is a little bit croaky. I've been talking on stream for about seven hours. So I do apologize. This one's a long ass fucking video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, as per usual, ELF Live, to, as you're seeing this today, um, should, be, uh, should be up by now. And then, uh, yeah, how to. So I'm going to try and do a Tory video at some point this week. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It should be a good week. Some good games on in the coming week 11. We're in week 11. Very close to the end of the year now. So teams are really going to be starting pushing. And uh, that's what they get. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you amazing people that tuned in for stream. And we've got a Discord chat now as well. If you guys want to talk to me. If you want to talk to people that's joined in the stream. We have a Discord chat. I'll leave that link in the description. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'll see you guys in ELF Live. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Wherever you need me, message me on Twitter, Instagram. I'll leave both of them linked in the description anyway. See you later and stay sharp and goodbye.